This is Rick Muir in a monumental crash. You had a, a the leg injuries and all that, but um, you are successful in winning races all the way up until the moment you decided to retire. I mean, you went 8,500 the year before. Um, so what was base, What was behind the decision for you? In my, I remember this. So in my mind, it felt like that you had, like, man, this guy's walking away while he's still competitive, while he's still relevant. Well, what was behind that decision? How, how, how easy was that decision or how hard was it? It was difficult. It, it was it was definitely difficult, and um, but it was desire. It was going away. Yeah, was the reason. And uh, I, I'd always told myself I'd seen I'd seen in all kinds of sports. You know, people go too long. And 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 I just didn't want to do that. Yeah, I didn't want to go too long. But but even more than so, I'd already thought about it in that respect. I mean way before I ever thought about retirement. That was just kind of a plan, you know. But I also knew that eventually the desire was going to go away, just like anything, any of my hobbies or anything I've ever done, yeah. you know. I knew one day I was going to wake up and say, you know what, I'm just not having the fun that I used to have here. I knew that day would come, and I and, and I tried to be halfway sensible with my money and, and not get the size boat I really wanted when I wanted it and not charter the plane or buy the plane that I wanted when I wanted it or the motor home, um, you know, because I wanted to make sure when that day came I could do it and not have to keep doing it to make ends meet. And because to me, as soon as it, the desire dropped off, the performance was going to go with it, and I knew that. So I just kept tabs... The very first time that I thought about the desire, I think it was at Indy, or one of the races, may not have been Indy, but I always took it to the room with me. You know, I took it to the hotel, I took it home with me, and you know, I'd come back the next day and say, all right, guys, last night I was thinking about it. We need to take a look at trying this, 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 or this. You know, that was just what I did. And, and I remember walking in the garage one day, the next day's practice, Walked in the garage and said, all right, guys, where are we at? What are we doing? And it dawned on me. I hadn't even thought about it overnight. Mm. Uh, ah, first sign. That was the first sign to me of the desire was starting to taper off. So I just started keeping tabs on that, that desire. And, and I just kept noticing little things here, little things there. And, um, you know, maybe not catching something quite as quick as I would have, you know, before or whatever. Nothing that was ever a problem. Yeah. Nothing ever, came, you know, close to being a problem, but just things that I noticed. And um, and I just felt like it was desire starting to do it. When you made the decision, did you have ever have second thoughts about that? N well, one time when we came out with with uh, the Beast, the pushrod the motor. engine, yeah. <laughs> you when, helped build this I, motor. When I saw the uh, – no, I, did, I didn't do – that much with it but when i saw the performance of it i thought oh damn <laughs> you know this would be a this would be a time to run but <laughs> but it lasted about that long you know i i really got no regrets yeah i mean it's fair to say though that the, the you had some pretty gnarly crashes in 92 the win at indy is still hard to watch to even today i mean that had to Somewhat expedite this desire, right? The upside down one. Yeah. Yeah. No. This, no, it, it did. I mean, you know, people thought thought that those were why I did. I got out. It would be a fair assumption, right? right. Myself yeah. included. Yeah. Right. But it, it, but that wasn't. Now now, if I'm honest, yes, it probably sped it up yeah. a little bit. But I was already thinking about it before that. It was already starting to cross my mind, you know. But actually. One of the things that happened in that in that wreck is one of the things that I fell back on when I made the the final decision. And when I had that crash, and you know, things spun around, I hit the wall, flips upside down, and you know, and I feel something else, and then something gets my attention. I look up, and I'm seeing sparks, and damn, I'm upside down. 
and you know, I'm not can't breathe, can't get my breath. There's fluid running in. I'd already had a pit fire, so I was having to breathe shallow because I can't stop. It's going down straight away. It's not slowing down because there's no rubber on the ground, and I'm waiting for it, for it to ignite, so I can hold my breath. First, the pit fire I had, I didn't have a breath when it ignited, and that was the scariest part, not being able to breathe and not having a breath. So I, I made sure I was breathing shallow that I was ready to take a breath if it ignited. And so I'm waiting for it to ignite while it's coming to a stop. And and I remember right after I hit upside down, this thought went through my head. I don't need this shit. You know, that, that thought just, excuse my language, but it, oh, it yeah. just, just crossed, right, real quick. I've crashed before. I've never thought that before. Yeah. Right? I mean, I didn't think about it that way then. But it no sooner went through my mind and it was gone. And I never even thought about that thought again. Came to a stop, got out of the car, whatever. Okay, then uh, the when I the last race that I had, I was going to have to have surgery on my wrist from one of those, I don't know if it was the upside down or the one after. But um, So I was going to miss some races, and that's when I started thinking about the retirement again. And, uh, and I remember that that's the first time I'd thought about that thought happening. That you know what, I've never had that thought when I crashed a car. And another thing, the last race, I parked a car that was still running. I'd never done that before in my life. So those were just indicators that the desire was gone or going. Yeah. And um, so I, when I fell back on, on all of that, then, it, then finally I woke up one morning and thought, you idiot, if you're thinking about it, it's past time. You know, so just time to go. When did you tell Roger? Uh, I don't remember exactly. It was it was not long before the Christmas party because I hadn't told anybody. Um, my wife and my brother were the only two that I'd ever mentioned it to mm. until I mentioned it to Roger because I didn't want anybody else influencing the decision. It had to be something I had to be comfortable with. The hardest part of the decision was feeling like I was letting the team down because we'd had all four wins with this team. Right. And I know how much everybody wanted to get the fifth one. And that's that that I probably struggled with more than any of it because I felt like I was letting them down. And I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on that. And then finally I thought, okay, you know, again, you idiot. You know, if if the desire is not there, you're not going to win the next one anyway, more than likely, because you aren't going to be doing the job you need to do. And... Plus, if you aren't doing the job you need to do, it's not fair to the team. It's not fair to the sponsors. It's not fair to anybody else. So, and if I'm not going to be competitive, it's not going to be any fun. So you just weigh all that stuff up. Yeah. And that sort of removes any idea then to, you know, just run the Indy 500. I mean, the beast would have been sort of, sort oh, of yeah, invited. Yeah. I mean, that would have been, well, I get it. When when I mentioned it to Roger, when I first, you know, told him that, that that's what I was saying about doing, you know, getting out of the seat. That was the first words out of his mouth. Run, you, just run wanna, you just want to run the three five hundreds, you know, the speedways. And and I, I said no, you know, I said the desire is not there to do it. That's why I'm making this decision. If I'm going to run one, I might as well run them all, mm. and and make the money. But then also, I've never understood how somebody could come and run Indy only. To me, if I'm going to be competitive, I got to be current. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've yeah. got to do it every day. Every day. day. Exactly. Yeah. You can't go in there. That's why I never got it's a pilot's too, license. It's too elite to <laughs> to uh, think you could show up and enjoy it. You're not going to enjoy it because you won't be competitive. Right, exactly. You're going to be way behind all day, every lap. Yep. No way. Yeah, that's uh, difficult, uh, and I can understand I mean, that. I can understand doing it for fun. Yes. You know, I, I, I understand But that. it might more than likely be a more miserable experience than you anticipate. Yeah. Just because it's, everything's not going to happen like you think, like right. you're dreaming it in your brain, right? <laughs> right. 1, 3, 9 on the time, 220.